Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church of Sparks online worship service. I'm Lori Stevens, the church administrator, and we're glad you're here with us this morning. Pastor Morley is preaching for the next several weeks a series of sermons on faith and how living by faith is not always easy. It's interesting when people are being tested and they need to practice their faith to overcome the challenges that are set before them. The sermon this morning is the unbelievable test God put before Abraham when the Lord told him to offer up his son Isaac as a burnt offering. Will Abraham by faith do it or not? That's why the pastor says living by faith is not always easy, especially if you want to be obedient to the Lord. So, as always, share these videos with your family and friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Good morning. Take your Bibles, if you would, the Word of God, then turn to Genesis chapter 22, 1 through 8. I've entitled this sermon, Faith Isn't Always Easy. In this portion of scripture, we have Almighty God asking Abraham to kill the child he had been waiting on for a long time. So this was no easy test. But in trusting God's character, Abraham was able to pass this test with flying colors. At one moment, life can be fun and exciting, and the next, it becomes trying and stressful, sometimes all in the space of a few hours. You may or may not have seen the test coming, but it's here. It's in your life. Now, how are you going to handle it? For the next few sermons, I want to look at a few instances where God's people are tested and how they react, deal with, and overcome the challenges set before them in their life. Hopefully, these sermons will help us understand the purpose of trials and tests and how to face them in faith and in the power of Christ. Abraham had been waiting for Jehovah God for 25 years for the son he had promised him when Abraham was 75 and Sarah was 65. Now he at 100 and she at 90 years old, the promised child comes. Can you ladies imagine giving birth and nursing a child at 90 years old? Or since we now know men can get pregnant and have a baby, how would you men like to give birth to a child? I'm not sure how that works, but I've been assured by the Democrat Party that men can have babies. Anyway, Abraham, Sarah, and Isaac are enjoying and living life. Things are good. So what can go wrong? Up to this point in his life, Abraham had been faithful to God. Now, he was not perfect. There were times of wavering when his life was on the line. Yet overall, Abraham had shown himself to be faithful. So God gave him the offspring he promised. And the family is thriving. Now God comes calling and he has an interesting request. Let me ask you, have you ever been asked to do something outrageously difficult? Something you really didn't want to do? Maybe it happened at work or in the military or at home with family and friends. I at one time was asked to preach a funeral. A dear friend asked me to do that. As I was sitting in the chapel waiting for it to begin with no preparation and I had never done one before. Well, Abraham had a track record as one who was constantly asked to perform tasks without much time and without much information. Remember when God asked him to leave the comforts of his hometown in Genesis and ask him to walk until he told him to stop, Genesis 12:1. Now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Yet as tough as that was, the most intense command from God was about to confront Abraham. And it is a big asking. Asking Abraham to kill the child he had been waiting on for a long time was no easy task. But for Abraham to pass this test, he will need to surrender to the Lord. This morning, I want you to see what it takes to surrender to God's will 
and to God's word. Look there at Genesis chapter 22, 1 and 2. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Then he, God, said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. For sure, surrender requires trust in the Lord. Have you ever had something that you waited a long time to receive? Maybe it was your education, a wife, a husband, a child, that special car, a house, a bonus, maybe an advancement in your career. When you wait a long time and work hard for something, you tend to value and treasure that item. I love the way verse 1 eases into this story. Sometime after picking up his family and moving, God again tested Abraham. Because of the extraordinary nature of the test and the moral qualms it raised for Abraham and later audiences, the reader is informed, first of all, that what is to follow is only a test. Verse 1. It seems to me God never intended for Abraham to follow through with killing Isaac. What God will ask of Abraham would seem barbaric had we not known why God would make the request. Sometime after relocating, this event occurs. Perhaps years after, we don't know. But here in verse 1, God calls Abraham to move. And here's what God said to Abraham in verse 2. Then he, God, said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I shall tell you. Now when you read that, it grabs your attention. So why is God asking this of Abraham? Verse 1 again reminds us it was a test. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham. The test was twofold. One was to show God that Abraham would put nothing ahead of him. Of course, God would have already known that. Second, proved to Abraham that he could be faithful to God no matter what life would bring to him. So God instructs Abram to take his son, verse 2, your only son whom you love, to the land of Moriah. Then God asked Abraham to offer up Isaac as a burnt offering on the mountains, which I will tell you. So God is asking Abraham to sacrifice his only son, the son he waited for for 25 years. A burnt offering signified the complete surrender of the worshiper and the complete acceptance to God. This is a good time to ask, what is it in your life that you would not even consider giving over to the Lord? Your time, your money, using your gifts, giving up your pleasures, giving up your sinful lifestyle. You know, over the years I've had many families, I've known many families, that wouldn't serve the Lord because they did not want to give up their Sunday mornings with their family. That was too great a sacrifice for them. Now listen, whatever we put before God in our life is our God. Someone asked me just a few weeks ago, can your family be an idol? And Without hesitation, I answered, absolutely. Once, ag once again, God will ask Abraham something of Abraham, without giving him all the details. I know that alone would drive some of us crazy. How will Abraham even be able to consider this command from God? Here's how. Abraham must fully trust the Lord Jehovah God. One thing I know from life is that you will only follow the Lord's call to the extent that you trust him. From a personal standpoint, God asked me to leave a comfortable, good job with proven opportunities for advancement. And by the way, it was a company with good union pay and benefits. If I had stayed there, I would have retired when I was 46 years old. 
up to that point in my life, I thought I would retire from there. When God called me into the ministry, I was being asked to sacrifice my job as a burnt offering to the Lord, as well as my family's welfare and their future. I resisted that call for about a year because of my lack of trust, my great fear of talking and praying in front of people, and then the thought of all that could go and would go wrong, plus our family and friends, most of them thought I'd lost my mind. Here's my point. Whenever the Lord asks anything of you, you will have to decide if you will surrender to his will. Your ability to surrender will, will depend in part on your trust level. And I can tell you it's not easy. Many Christians can't even sacrifice getting out of bed on Sunday morning. Sleep is more important to them or watching football or golf or baseball than attending church and putting the Lord first. Look there at verses 3 and 4. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. So surrender requires obedience to God's will. Once God asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, Abraham had to decide if he would be obedient to God's command or not. Until we are willing to be obedient to God's will, we will never surrender our will for his. Abraham probably had a million reasons not to obey God, just like you will have. Remember, God promised Abraham a son. He promised him as many descendants as of the sand of the seashore. Abraham waited 25 years for God to deliver on this initial part, part of the promise. Notice what Abraham chooses to do. Early in the morning, Abraham packs up and heads for the place God spoke to him about. Sometimes we will say we will be obedient to God's will, but we drag our feet. Over the years, I've known and heard of pastors who were called at a young age to into the ministry, but never surrendered to the ministry until they retired from the military or once they got a pension from some other job. Then they took the step of faith and went into the ministry. And it did seem to me being able to fall back on their pension gave them the impetus to surrender to God's will. Instead of dragging his feet, what does Abraham do? He gets right on it. The very next morning, he, a couple of servants, and Isaac head for the place God would lead him. Abraham's obedience to God indicated his willingness to surrender his will for God's will. You know, we can tell others we're Christians. We can tell others how much we love Jesus. But the proof of that love will show in our willingness to be obedient to his word and to his will. Amen. Now drop down to verses 5 through 8. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. And then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. You see, surrender requires trusting God's promises, trusting God's word. I will never forget the first Sunday at First Baptist Church, Saratoga, Wyoming, after seven years of college and seminary, taking my family, three boys, a girl, one a baby, in a U-Haul 1,400 miles to a little church of 25 for $500 a month. And I'm in my office on that Sunday morning, and it hit me. I'm thinking, Lord, what if this doesn't work? 
Now, I'm not a handsome man. I'm not gifted. I'm not intelligent. But I made a commitment that, that Sunday morning that I was all in for the Lord, that I would preach the Bible, and for 45 years I've seen God honor His Word. And that's why I'm not changing what the Bible clearly teaches on anything for anybody. The question that any sane person would ask is how could Abraham even entertain such a request from God? I might ask you, how can you entertain any request from God to sacrifice something you love? Abraham understood something. Abraham understood that God made him a promise. Do you ever think about what was going through Abraham's mind during this three-day trip? Do you think he was filled with worry or doubt or fear? Look at verse 5. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. Notice he told the servants to stay because he and Isaac were going to worship and then return to you. Notice the word we in verse 5. Abraham knew that he was not going to leave that mountain with a dead son. Abraham would be able to make the sacrifice because he knew that God would fulfill his promise that he made. The New Testament tells us what was in the mind of Abraham when this was going on. Hebrews eleven seventeen through 19. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he, Abraham, who had received the promises, offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac your seed shall be called, concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. God revealed to this New Testament writer, through inspiration, what was running through the mind of Abraham. Abraham's secret was that he fully and completely trusted the person giving the test. He said in Hebrews eleven nineteen, 19, Abraham considered that God was able. We must ask ourselves, do we trust that the Lord is able amid the test that he sets before us? God hadn't let Abraham down. And Abraham knew God wouldn't fail him during what was for sure an un unconventional test. You know, in the ministry, people ask me fairly often, how can I know God's will? You find his will in the Bible. Let me give you an easy example. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. It says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. You want to know some of God's will for your life? Here it is. Be happy. Pray. Give thanks to the Lord. That is God's will for you this morning. Now I'm sure the Lord will never ask any of us to do something as drastic as Abraham sacrificing Isaac. But he might ask you to be in church every Sunday morning. He might ask you to sing in the choir, teach a Sunday school class, be a deacon, lead the congregation in scripture and prayer, be a greeter, an usher, a counter, and the list goes on and on. But any job for and from the Lord will require you to die to self and pride and ego. It will require you to put him first. And any job will require humility. And of course, giving up your Sunday mornings to worship and serve him. And I can tell you, many Christians will not do that. But God calling you to serve first starts with you praying to receive him, and then following him in believers' baptism becoming a member of a church. And I want to give you that opportunity this morning. Are you willing to become a Christian, 
to get in God's will so you can be obedient to him. If you want to do that, bow your head right where you're at and pray this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner. I ask Jesus to forgive me for all my sins and take me to heaven when I die. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you. I'll see you next week with another sermon. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but love and found was blind, but now. The Lord has promised good to me, his word, my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life is.